HP ZBook Studio is a high-end lineup from HP for designers and content creators and maybe developers. They used to have very high press tag. I have watched a YouTuber's review on the a ZBook Studio G10. He has highly praised that laptop. He said that is one of his all-time favorite laptop. And recently when I browsed eBay, I noticed that some of the ZBook Studio G11 16-inch, they still have the 4K Dream Color HP 120Hz display but with like relatively lower memory and SSD configuration, has a very low price tag of just about 1000. Notice that the memory and SSD are totally upgradable. If you like, you can upgrade the memory to 96 gigabytes or even 128 gigabytes, if that's what you want. And for the SSD, for sure, that's a like standard M2 2280 SSD that's totally upgradable. So after a period of time of using this laptop, in this video, I'm gonna talk about three things I really like about this laptop and three things I really don't like this laptop. So start with the things I like. The first thing, of course, is the screen. This is stunning screen with 4K, 120 Hertz, IPS, dream color display. The color is vibrant and accurate and the texts are sharp. It doesn't hurt your eyes. I measure the brightness of the screen is about 350 nits. Definitely can be improved, not too bright, but still this 4K 120 Hertz dream color IPS display is really gorgeous. Your eyes will enjoy using these. So that's the number one thing I like about this laptop. And the second thing is this lap laptop, the ZBook Studio G11 is overall thin and light. It is a little less than 20 millimeters. It's 1.8 kilo grams uh, compared to other 16 inch laptops with discrete GPU. It's definitely on the lighter side. It's, my testing unit is with the RTX 1000 ADA. Maybe with RTX 3000 ADA or 2000 ADA, it's slightly heavier, but again, still 1.8 to 1.9 kilograms for a 16 inch laptop with discrete GPU is light. And the third thing I like about this laptop is the keyboard. This keyboard is very comfortable to type on. The keycaps are decently sized and I like the centered layout of the keyboard. When you're sitting in front of your computer, like you, you're in front of the screen in the, in the center of the screen all the time, the type feeling is great. And can you believe this keyboard also has beautiful RGB color. It, it, HP provides a sophisticated uh, RGB tuning application that you can like configure per key RGB or per section RGB for this keyboard. Now here comes the three things I don't really like about this laptop. The first thing is the build and the material choice of this laptop makes it feels cheap. This is definitely plastic. The A, A side and D side, these are plastic. I understand they want to make this lightweight to reduce the weight of this laptop, but it just, it just uh, take that premium feeling of this laptop away. I mean, look at the screen. The screen to body ratio is so great. It, it must have a more than 90% of screen to body ratio. It's, it has thin bezels all around the top, the bottom, the two sides, all so thin. It's one of the thinnest bezels I've ever seen on any laptops. And also like the B deck is so clean. The keyboard is clean and the trackpad is large. It also has fingerprint uh, reader. It has a IR camera sensor. Everything about the B side and, and C sides are great, but the material from the A cover and D cover, it just feel like it's it's cheap. They're, it's plastic. When you hold this in your hand, of course, if you don't care about the material, that's fine. But I wish this can be like metallic material. And the second thing is about the power connector. This laptop uses a, a proprietary power connector. That's fine. That's totally understandable. In fact, laptops with discrete GPUs with this kind of like power consumption level, especially when equipped with a like 40 RTX 4070, a proprietary power connector is mandatory. But what I don't like about it is that it's USB type C charger provides way less than even 90 Watts of power. When you connect your laptop with a USB type C power connector, even though you have a like lower configuration like mine with just a, a, a RTX 1000 ADA, which doesn't really consume much power. The CPU is running slow. The CPU is running 20 to 25% lower than you use the proprietary power connector. And it's not just like that. When running with the power connector, like USB type C power connector, you feel the laggy and slow slowness even slower than you use the just use like battery. And the third thing I don't really like is the fan noise. If you connected to the proprietary power connector, which supplies full power, the fan immediately kicks in no matter what you are doing. And the fan noise is constantly like too loud for, I guess, any 
content creators or designers favorite. You gotta be really insensitive to the fan noise to accept this level of like spinness from the fan. HP BIOS can provide some configuration to adjust the fan speed from zero to 15. And from one to 15 is the fan spin from the least to the most. And zero is kind of like a uh, default setting or something. I adjusted to any of these numbers, like from zero to one to five to 15. And none of the settings really like slows the fans down and make the noise better. Now I'm setting the laptop to one, but I still, again, when I connect it to the power connector, running even in balance mode, I can still hear the fan noise a lot. And that's almost a deal breaker for me. About the performance, the CPU is fine. It's last gen Core Ultra 7 165H. It has over 12,000 for multi-core performance in Geekbench 6. It has a little about 2300 single core performance. And this one, the RTX 1000 ADA is a equivalent to 4050, RTX 4050. And if you have some requirement to the GPUs, you definitely can choose the RTX 2000 or RTX 3000. The 2000 is a 4060 equivalent and the 3000 ADA is a RTX 4070 equivalent. I believe the G11 doesn't have a uh, ADA RTX 4000 configuration, but the G10 does have that option. And that's a 4080, RTX 4080 laptop GPU equivalent. The speaker is okay. I'm actually a little disappointed considering how large the chassis can hold the speakers. It's fine if you're doing Teams conference, but if you're doing some multimedia tasks or listening to music, I'm not impressed by these speakers. The touchpad is A tier. It's not S tier because it's still like a traditional mechanic touchpad, but it's a great touchpad. Overall, this laptop has its clear advantages like its screen, its portability as a 16 inch laptop, and also the keyboard. I think it's good for those who use the screen a lot, like student mostly for productivity, also gaming for sometimes. If you do game on this laptop, I suggest you to opt for a better graphic card than RDX 1000 ADA. Also, it may be good for content creators and designers need a great screen, a larger memory because it's upgradable, but the fan noise is quite annoying. I, I don't know if any designers or content creators want to hear the fan noise like cranking in all the time. And it may also be suitable for developers that need a large screen on the go and doesn't really care about the noise too much. But again, the constraints on the USB type C power connector to this laptop kind of uh, undermine its portability as you go in case you have to like carry the power adapter, the original power adapter all the time to get the full power. And when you connect it to the original power connector, you got to hear the fan noise all the time. That's quite annoying. So yeah, that's my review about the ZBook Studio G11. Clear advantages and clear shortcomings depending on how you want to use this. It does have a very low price tag as of now and HP has yet to upgrade the G ZBook Studio lineup this year. The CPU is one generation older than the state of the art Intel or AMD CPUs. So in theory, this is still the latest generation of the ZBook Studio. All right, that's everything I want to share today. If you like the content, please like this video and consider to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.